Joining me now is Corey Bellick. He's the CEO and Executive VP of Can Alaska Uranium. Good to see you, sir. Yeah. Oh, pleasure to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. Now, now in the past, you've made some bold statements. So you said that uh, if investors want to make a fortune, they should come on board and consider Can Alaska, and and uh, you're a good play on a, uh, a net uh, carbon zero carbon uh, economy. So explain that for us. Well, you know, we're about discovery and discovering the uranium space, specifically the Athabasca Basin, which is where you find these very large high grade uranium deposits. So if you truly want to build quick value when you discover one of these potential tier one uranium assets in the Athabasca Basin, it can be an extreme outcome for shareholders. And we are truly at the front end of that value curve on the discovery path. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to say we made an incredible discovery last summer at our Pike Zone at West MacArthur. And, um, you know, hang on for the ride because this, this looks special, it looks right. Right, so this is a $10 million drilling program you have underway right now. And you say in, in terms of the geological, geological setting, similar to Arrow, similar to Eagle Point, and could be similar to MacArthur River as, as well. The, the, the previous mentioned uh, basement hosted MacArthur River on conformity, so uh, give us a, an update there. Yeah, so it is a $10 million program, which year over year is double the budget, and that's because of the success in 2022 that we had. So we're moving into this year fairly aggressively. We want to try and figure out whether this is a true tier one asset as quickly as possible. It sure looks right because it does look like the best parts of an Eagle Point or an Aero system. I'm very familiar with Eagle Point having been chief geologist for five years there. So I, I've got some intimacy with these types of basement deposits. But we have to be mindful that it could actually be the roots of an unconforming system like at MacArthur. And that's what I've tasked the team with going out and trying to prove with this year's program. What do we have on our hands? We've got a tiger by the tail. We don't know exactly what it means, but everything's pointing in the right direction. And we've already got over 100 meters of connected mineralization in the basement as we move toward that unconformity. So it's truly shaping up to be special. And other projects on the go, lots of irons in the fire. Uh, you've had intriguing drill targets at the, the key extension project. And you think this will be a front runner for, for new discoveries. Can you elaborate on that? Well, absolutely, because key extension in itself is an extension of the Key Lake deposits. Over 150 million pounds of uranium produced historically from Cameco and Arano at that mill and from those deposits. We've got an extension of that controlling fault system on the key extension project just 10 kilometers away, never been touched by a drill hole. We ran geophysics, it looks correct. It looks like the early days of what NextGen targeted to make their aero discovery, not a single hole in this project. And if we're right, and these anomalies are right, and at the right scale, uh, it could be a real game changer again for the company being that close to that critical infrastructure of the Key Lake Mill that needs feed in 15 years post MacArthur River we can immediately find a home for anything we can find uh, at that milling complex. So it, it, it could truly be special if, if we're correct in the ge geological. Um, right, so that sounds promising uh, as well. Yeah. And then you've staked uh, the Frontier Project. This is near the Rough Rider Deposit Corridor. What are you looking to do there? Well, we're looking to find a partner, actually move that forward. Uh, it's great geologically, but you know it, it's in, again, the Eastern Athabasca Basin. We can't do it all. We can't have all these projects on the go at once. So looking to bring a partnership in there where we can share some of that early risk and uh, ultimately move it forward. I mean, it is an extension of that rough, rough rider mineralized corridor that in the last cycle was so important. I mean, that deposit went from nothing to a value of $650 million in, in a couple of years. And that's what we're looking to do for our shareholders through any of our project portfolio. But Frontier is just another example of staking the right land at the right time in the right space. So you've got this prospect gener generator model as well. So you're staking additional land in the basin near the Key Lake uh, uranium mill. So so how is this going to drive that, that model forward? Well, really, it's about um, trying to find the right projects. And we're very aggressive with our staking where the geology makes sense. So we're looking strategically to improve our portfolio and add to it, providing opportunities for deals for opportunities for us to go and explore with our shareholders money if we think it warrants that attention and uh, it really is you know building a world-class portfolio in that eastern Athabasca basin where there's a clear need for tier one assets and they don't exist right now tier one assets post MacArthur River and Cigar Lake and that's what we're focused on focused on finding something that can feed that infrastructure and ultimately it will have a buyer if we're successful. And then lastly, as if uh, all of that's not enough, you're in Manitoba as well. 
where uh, you've got a, a previously producing mine, the Mandelbridge, Mandelbridge mine. Uh, you think you may be sitting on district scale, you may be able to find high grade, and then there's some other nickel projects too, right? Yeah, correct. So, so why nickel when we're a uranium focused company? No one wanted to have this conversation about uranium for 10 years or more post Fukushima. So we went out and saw the opportunity in the nearby Thompson, uh, Thompson nickel belt, fifth largest sulfide nickel belt on the planet. And we've staked over 40,000 hectares of land. Some of it early stage conceptual. A lot of it has clear targets on it already defined that look exactly the same way as an early Thompson analog. That's a giant nickel deposit. It truly is district scale in our portfolio, and um, we're looking to find ways to monetize that for our shareholders now, whether it's through deals, uh, various other opportunities like a spin out or something like that. We're working on that right now, and it's a goal of mine in 2023 to go out and make that happen. So um, we're, we're gonna find a way to make that uh, valuable to our shareholders. It was great to finally meet you and uh, get to know and learn more about Can Alaska. Well, thank you, Mark. Pleasure being here. Okay, thanks, good stuff. Uh, Corey, CEO and Executive VP of Can Alaska Uranium.